what does energy mean to you and how does it impact uh, and apply to the work that you do? Energy is something that, that I really took for granted, I think, most of my life growing up. Um, I was always healthy. I was always fit. I was an athlete. I was doing soccer and martial arts growing up and weight training. And uh, I prided myself on being extremely fit and strong. And energy was a natural byproduct of that lifestyle. And then in my, in my mid-20s, uh, something happened, which was I got mononucleosis and, uh, from Epstein-Barr virus. And this is an infection that most people get when they're children. And the way it manifests when you're a child is as a common cold. It's no big deal. Nobody knows that it's Epstein-Barr virus versus any common rhinovirus or you know, influenza or anything else. But when you get it as an adult, uh, it often manifests very severely. And for me, it did. And um, I lost about 35 pounds in the span of uh, 40 days or so because my throat was so swollen and so painful and so filled with pus that I couldn't consume any food. And, um, and then after finally recovering from that, from severe fatigue and you know, losing tons of weight and basically being debilitated, I was still pretty debilitated for several months after that with severe chronic fatigue and that experience was the was the catalyst for me developing an interest in energy and the reason why is because i realized that energy is is everything to having a good life if if you don't have energy you can't do anything that you want to do i mean i wasn't able to do my job i wasn't able to hang out with my girlfriend i wasn't able to play soccer with my friends on the beach I wasn't able to just do simple things that I would like. I wasn't able to do any of the simple things of life that I was previously able to do. And fatigue, severe fatigue strips that away from you. There was a study done by the High Performance Institute where they looked at one of the qualities, uh, they looked at the, the traits of what they call high achievers. And these are people who are not only extraordinarily financially successful or, or by worldly measures, but also who have subjectively a high level of personal happiness. And one of the, the five core traits that they found over and over and over again, again among those people is making time to cultivate their physical energy levels. Every day they carve out time to cultivate their own energy levels. These are people who have discovered that when you don't have energy, you can't pursue your goals and dreams. You can't live life at the highest level. And conversely, on the other end of the spectrum, we have people with chronic fatigue like what I had, where your whole life is just, you, you just watch as, as, as your life is stripped away from you. All of the things that you love doing and all of your dreams and goals and your ability to work towards them and even do simple things like just get on the ground and, and play with your children or your grandchildren. All of those things are stripped away from you and all of a sudden you're on the couch watching your life go by. And these are the, the two extremes of, of energy. One is chronic debilitating fatigue, where you can't really live your life anymore. And the other end is you know, the, the highest, most successful uh, people, most um, productive and, and successful and happiest people among us who are extremely energetic because they know the importance of cultivating their daily energy levels. And there's a whole huge range of people that are somewhere in the middle of that spectrum with mild to moderate fatigue, not severely debilitating, but, you know, having some degree of fatigue. And the, the problem in, in the modern world, the modern Western world is it's been normalized. It's so common that we all accept it as normal. We all, we all accept that it's normal to wake up groggy, to be smashing our alarm clock, the snooze button, trying to get more you know, a, a little bit more sleep because we're too tired to get ourselves out of bed. Then we're groggy and, 
and we can't think clearly and then we need to get our caffeine so our brain turns on so we can begin to function and you know we hit a wall in the afternoon and we you know try to 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 struggle through the day with not enough energy feeling sleepy feeling tired feeling easily fatigued and we don't realize most people don't realize that that is stripping you know uh, it, it's stripping a big piece of their potential uh, to live a good life, to do what they want in their career, in their relationships, in every aspect of their life, it's it's stripping that away from them. Wait, so so you're saying that that's not that what most people experience today? What you just described is waking up tired and groggy and hit that wall in the afternoon, and you know aren't excited and joyful and energetic all day long and feeling great. That what most people are experiencing today. Uh, even though we've normalized it, it's actually not our normal state or our most natural state, that there is something beyond that that everybody can tap into. Yeah. The, just look at a, a, a young child. You know, my, my baby, for example, my, my two-year-old daughter, almost two, you know, she wakes my wife up every day much earlier than my wife would like to wake up, you know, and like, come on, let's get up. It's time to start the day, you know. And uh, the same, the same with my son. My son's going to turn five soon. You know, we're we're all assuming you allow your child to sleep, however much they need to sleep, they're going to wake up with lots of energy, excited for the day, raring to go. Assuming they're, give, they're you're giving them good nourishment, you're not waking them up before their sleep cycle is done. You know, they're going to be ready and energetic, and that's what we all are when we're young and healthy, and that's the normal state. What we've accepted as normal this constant feeling of tiredness and being fatigued and sleepy very easily that those are not normal. They're, they're actually signs that from your body, it's your body crying for help and trying to give, to clue you into the fact that you need to do something differently to get your energy back. So you're saying, you're saying those aren't just signs of aging. I can hear people tuning in and go, well, I'm, 40 or I'm 50 or I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm aging, you know, as part of aging, you, you slow down, you get tired, you get weak, you have disease, you don't feel great. Aren't those just signs of aging? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Maybe I'll jump forward a little bit in my answer. And this is something I'll try to answer succinctly. And then you, we can come back to it if you'd like. Um, I'll give you an example. So one thing that I hope we can talk about in this interview is mitochondria. And mitochondria are our cellular energy generators. Inside of our body, almost all of the trillions of cells of our body, almost all of the energy that is produced within them it comes from mitochondria, from your heart to your brain, to your muscles, to your organs. Pretty much everything relies on mitochondria to produce virtually all their energy. And mitochondria. Um, when we when we do we can do biopsies for example we can plunge a, a big thick hollow needle into somebody's you know bicep or quadricep muscle and take out a chunk of muscle and then put it under a microscope and count the number of mitochondria in those cells and you can also look at you know the size of them and the shape of them are they damaged or are they intact and and, and so on uh, but let's just focus on the the actual number of them to to make it simpler um, what we know from those studies is if you take uh, a 40 year old and take that biopsy versus if you take a 70 year old, the 70 year old has half of the mitochondrial capacity of a 40 year old on average. Okay. And we also know that a similar transition takes place between the ages of 20 to 40. Most people lose about half of their mitochondrial capacity in that sense. So this is the engine inside of your cells that's responsible for producing energy. From the ages of 20 to 70, it gets cut in half two times on average. Okay. Now, one could look at that and say, well, you see aging causes this loss of mitochondria, and so therefore it's very normal for people to be fatigued. Well, here's the interesting thing. If you take 70-year-olds, who are lifelong exercisers, and this relates to a concept that I hope we can talk about called hormesis, which is very important for mitochondrial health and something a lot of people don't fully appreciate. Um, 
if you look at those people, 70 year olds who are lifelong exercisers, they don't have half the mitochondrial capacity of a 40 year old. They have the same mitochondrial capacity as a 40 year old. So what, what that means is, is that thing that you detected originally, this loss of roughly 10% of mitochondrial capacity with each decade of life, is that quote unquote, a product of aging or a product of lifestyle? And it is based on that very clearly a product of lifestyle habits, not a product of aging. This is not something that has to happen with age. It's something that commonly occurs given the modern Western lifestyle. Thank you.